The title for this blog is Washed Up Dirt Vessels. <laughs> Washed Up Dirt Vessels. So, I mean, come on, doesn't sometimes you feel uh, just useless? Don't you kind of feel unclean, uh, not really with it in the Lord and, and uh, not, not feeling clean and alive? alive in the Lord and <clears throat> um, you know you just feel unclean you do you feel dirty you feel that's why I use the word you feel washed up is there any hope for my life you know that you start wondering that you know is there any hope because when we get in that state some of you know what I'm talking about some of you may be there now when you get in that state you actually have genuine concerns maybe fears uh you know is the lord ever, ever going to be able to use me again i just feel so messed up and everything <clears throat> and um in romans 9 uh i'm going to read some scriptures that don't help at all <laughs> they talk about vessels vessels of honor and vessels that are uh, of wrath this these scriptures are not going to help the person who feels like a washed up dirt vessel but they help set the stage for something <clears throat> what if God willing to show his wrath and to make his power known endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy which he had afore prepared unto glory even us whom he hath called not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. So there it's talking about vessels of honor, vessels of wrath, and he's kind of spelling it out there. <clears throat> One of the things I liked about this verse <laughs> was uh, the first two words, what if, what if. And I began to meditate on that. <clears throat> So I wrote down, what if we fear our status based on wrong perceptions? In other words, we fear our status because we're, um, we feel washed up or we feel useless or we feel like, you know, we're unusable by God. And, you know, I want him to be able to use me, but we don't even, you know, in one sense, we can even not even look for him to move or to touch us because we just feel so you know, messed up and, uh, and apart from him. And, but I, but I, my what if was, <clears throat> what if we fear our status of being, feeling that way <clears throat> based on wrong perceptions? Hmm, okay. But then I had another what if. What if I told you that God can use you to open blind eyes so they can see Jesus. Some would say, there's no way the Lord can't use me. I'm out of tune, out of touch. Uh, I'm just, you know, again, I'm, I'm just a washed up dirt vessel. <clears throat> um, but if, if God could use you, and he, he can but if God could use you to open others' blind eyes, wouldn't that be wonderful? All right, so we're going to go to John chapter 9. <clears throat> and um, I'm going to read verses 1 through 3 to begin with. John chapter 9. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? In other words, why is he born blind? Was it because of his sin or his parents? And Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of God should be manifest in him. So, the story here in John 9 begins with a person. It, he appears as useless, 
and he appears as blind and he appears as basically washed up as any kind of a minister within Israel. Uh, all he can do, it appears, is just beg, just beg. And um, <clears throat> um, you have the disciples' response to that and, you know, probably other people that are passing by. People think, you know, he's messed up. And like the disciples said, he's messed up because of, because of sin. That's what they're saying. Okay. So we get, we get hung up on sin a lot. Let me tell you something. Yeah, okay. Jesus died for our sin. But Jesus, we need to get hung up on Jesus. We need our hearts to just be hung up on him. In the best shape, in the worst shape, in any shape, doesn't matter. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we need to keep our heart and our focus and our desire towards Him. And to, instead of letting these dirty, creepy things creep in on us, creep in on our mind, creep in on our emotions, begin to speak to our head and begin to declare things that are not true of His heart. And there we have it, wrong perceptions, because Jesus did deal with sin, you see. And I often say this, that Jesus, you know, he did it once and for all. That means if we sin today, Jesus doesn't have to go back to the, get off the throne, walk back over to the cross, get on it, and die for that sin that you just sinned. No, he's already died for our sins so that we could be with him no matter what kind of state we're in. We can still be with him because we belong to him if we're born again. All right, so um, so let's talk about not our our wrong perceptions. Let's talk about how Jesus how Jesus sees things, how Jesus sees this situation. And Jesus um, <clears throat> Jesus, when he looks at you know, they're saying, well, did he sin? To them, it's either sin or sin. Was it him that sinned, or was it his parents? But Jesus sees things differently, and and he knows. This man in this condition, even though he's in this condition, he still has purpose. God still has purpose for him. Jesus still knows there's purpose and is there correcting not the blind man, not the the, the useless man, if you will, or the washed up man, or the dirt vessel, or whatever. Jesus is correcting his disciples to get them more in tune with him. And Jesus <clears throat> knows even in this condition, this man has purpose. And the proof of that is the, is the words. Of verse 3, we read them earlier. Neither hath this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Now, <clears throat> Jesus isn't saying that this man never, ever, ever sinned, or that his parents, they never sinned either. He's not saying that. He's saying he's in this condition not because of parents sinning or you sinning. Yeah, you sinned. Your parents sinned. But that's not what this is about. <clears throat> so in verse 4, Jesus uh, continues. I mean, this verse almost seems like out of context a little bit um, because of the things that he's talking about. But he's, he's still within the context. And he says, the first words out of Jesus' mouth is, I must work. I must work. He didn't say, get up, man, you must work, or, you know, any of the things that we might hear or think that God's saying to us. He says, I must work. And he says, I must work the works of him that sent me. And he says, while it is the day, the night cometh when no man can work, as long as I am, here he is talking, still about this situation, as long as I am, in the world, I am the light of the world. Okay? 
So he's he's spelling it out here. He's he's saying, and and it's interesting too. We'll see it in just a second when he says, "I must work the works of Him that sent me." Of Him that sent me. And he's talking not about the disciples doing a job. Uh, he's not talking about the blind man doing a job. He says, I must work uh, as long as I am in the world. But as long as I am, then we're going to see some things happen. Well, Jesus is here. He's in us. It's his life. All right, so... Um, Jesus here, he's talking about in, the, in verse 4 um, and 5, uh, Jesus has purpose with, particularly with what appears as a dirty, blind, hopeless person. But Jesus has purpose there. Jesus knows that there's a reason for him, this man, yet, that it's not over with, that he gave up maybe a long time ago, but the Lord hadn't given up. And so the next verse, he moves into this, and the next verse is verse 6. When he had, this is Jesus, when he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of, of the blind man with the clay. All right. Now let's flash back. Let's look and let's go back to the tabernacle. Let's go back to the temple. Let's go back and look through, walk through it. And what do you see? You see gold and you see instruments, vessels of honor that are made out of gold. And, and you see all of this shiny beauty and all this stuff. You see anointing oil. Uh, to be put on the priest and to be put on different ones and different sacrifices. You see all of this stuff. But Jesus, who is our high priest, he you, doesn't use gold. He uses dirt. He, he uses dirt. Yeah. And instead of using holy anointing oil he uses spit this ought to make you happy actually <laughs> that he he's he is a high priest the high priest he's a true priest of god and yet he's using certain things that uh, uh, and finding purpose in certain things that we say there's no purpose for dirt there's no purpose for spit that's just secular I want, you know, and there's, there's us, you know. Um, we, we want something more glorious to happen. Um, if we're a washed up vessel, we maybe are thinking about, you know, I want, I want to shine like gold. Or, or I want to flow like holy anointing oil. Well, how about just being his spit in his dirt? You okay with that? That's going to that's gonna be good enough to begin the process of opening his, another man's blind eyes. God can still use you if you feel like a washed up dirt vessel. He still wants people's eyes open and he still has has the ability to use things that nobody else would use because they would reject it because it's not good enough it's not holy enough it's not holy anointing oil i don't i don't feel what are you doing with that spit you're vulgar no no jesus you're not vulgar you're the high priest of god that's what you are that's what you are and it's interesting <clears throat> what i found here was that Jesus is using elements that are similar to the, the blind man. <laughs> Useless things, spit and dirt. He's, he's using 
similar things to bring about change. Um, and, you know, so we say, well, I'm, I'm worth, I'm down, I'm no good, I'm out of it, I'm not what Jesus wants, I'm not shining like gold, I'm not flowing like holy anointing oil. But Jesus, Jesus can use anything, can use and will use anything. So in verse 7, uh, and Jesus said unto him, Go wash <clears throat> in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. You remember Jesus used that word up here. Uh, I'm looking for it. Uh, it's verse 4. I must work the works of him that sent me. Okay, so Jesus is sent. Well, guess what? So is the blind man going to be sent here. <clears throat> Jesus said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. You must be sent. I'll, I'll explain that in just a minute. He went his way. He didn't go his own way. He went Jesus' way. He went his way. Therefore, and washed and came seeing. He came seeing. Well, why didn't the, the spit and the dirt just make him see right off? That, that was part of it. Clearly, it was part of it. Because it's not complete unless you participate. He wants you to participate with him. He wants us to be one with him. He wants us to, be, uh, to believe, to be part of him, to hold on to him in these things. And, and to declare by your actions that regardless of how you feel or look or whatever, you're washed. And to declare by your actions that you're not washed up. You're washed. You're not washed up. And to declare that God can use dirt that is washed up. See it? Do you see it? Dirt that is washed up. He gets the... You see that? He's using dirt that is washed and the man is washed up. And so, you know, we, we become sad uh, because we see, sometimes we look within, we need to look in his face and be changed from glory to glory, 1 Corinthians 3, 18. But we look within ourselves, and then we see little in us that we think is worth anything. You know, I'm just unworthy. But Jesus is in there and he's the treasure. We need to quit discounting the whole thing. You know, you heard the saying, don't throw out the baby with the bath or don't throw out the baby with the bath water. Well, don't throw out the Son of God with the dirt vessel. Okay. Uh, yeah. You are an earthen vessel. Yes, you are a clay vessel. Yes, you are a mud vessel in that sense. But Second uh, Corinthians 4, 7, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God who lives in there, not the dirt vessel, but God can use it to open eyes. So my final little saying here is, So which are you? So which one are you? I, I'll give you three choices. Which one are you? Are you the washed up, useless blind man? Uh, if you are, <clears throat> God has a plan for you. Are you the spit and the clay? Well, if you are, God has a plan for you. Are you the earthen vessel with a treasure inside? If you are, God has a plan for you. This is all based on Him. I love it. I'll go back to those verses and then I'll, I'll stop. When they began to query Jesus and ask Him and try to draw out something about this man and they with and to do it in the context in the construct of their own mind jesus takes it away from the man regardless if he's blind or dirt or whatever <clears throat> and says i i must work 
I am the light as long as I'm here. And then Paul comes along and says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels so that we don't have to measure ourselves by our lack, but by the fullness of the treasure that we've received. Is that good? Is that, does that sound like Jesus? Let's pray. Father, oh, so wonderful that there is hope on every side as long as we are not making ourselves the focus of our, of our lack and making our lack the focus of our life or what we're not doing, the measure of our worth, but rather to look at Jesus to be changed, to, be, to find rest for our souls that, that groan, to find rest and to find the, the treasure inside and to realize that He can use us even if we feel like dirt and spit. We're His dirt when He puts His hand down and raises us up and we're his spit that comes from his mouth and we're his body and that's good enough for him. So may we focus our hearts on the one that is the only one that counts, Father Jesus, Jesus Christ, your Son. And may the Holy Spirit find new wings within our life to bring us out of the ark with all the beasts and the noise and the smell and to present us into the new creation in understanding and reality, to be free to live again by Him. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I can't hear you because I always put this on mute, but let's all say amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, folks. Amen. Bye -bye. Amen. Was that Mary? Of course it was. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Praise God. Well, I guess I'm going to go, but I love you guys. So, so proud of all of you coming and being on this and seeking the Lord, and not just religion, not just teaching, but seeking the Lord. Seek and you shall find. All righty. God bless you. Amen.